Friends, a very warm welcome to our ordination as we give thanks for the 18 women and men who have served Christ in ministry as deacons throughout this year and are now to be ordained priest. Welcome to your families and friends, deacons, for those who have prepared you for your ministries, and of course to you, the clergy and the members of the parishes in which you serve, and a particular welcome to the three cathedral alumni, Gavin, Ishak, and Lydia. We honor the beginnings of your ministry journey here. St. Paul's Cathedral is home church for Anglicans throughout Victoria, and we meet on the sovereign country of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, land that was taken and not ceded. And as you walked into the cathedral, you would have seen a new installation of a glass map showing the land how it was before colonization. It's a reminder for us to pay respect to elders past and present, to acknowledge their right and responsibility to care for this country and to work for a more just settlement for indigenous people. And so we honor all First Nations people present here, all engaging with this live broadcast, wherever you are the world over. If you're not yet a Christian, we are so pleased that you're here to support those who are being ordained today. If you've got questions about our faith or the significance of what we're doing today, please don't hesitate to ask me or one of my colleagues after the service. And as our candidates for ordination make their own commitment to God, I invite those of you who are clergy as well, who have made the same commitments, to reiterate those, reaffirm those in your hearts along with them. And if you yet to explore what God is asking you to do in your lives, now is an opportunity to ponder where your call in discipleship might lead you in ministry, lay or ordained. And so, let us pray to the God who calls us to be his own and ask that he would give us his servants and those to be ordained the needful gifts of grace, that together, as one body, we may be a sign of his love in our world. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, <clears throat> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts all desires secrets are hidden, and the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God has shone his light in our hearts to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Let us confess our failure to respond to him in faith and obedience. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all that is good, by your Holy Spirit you have appointed various orders of ministry in your church. Bless these persons now called to the order of priests. So fill them with your truth and clothe them with holiness that they may faithfully serve to the glory of your name and the benefit of your church. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Hear the word of the Lord. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. Now, as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it. Not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, 
looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Shine the light of your glory in our hearts, O Lord, that we may show your power and truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, 
they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I preach in the name of the living God. Amen. Well, as I step into this pulpit, on this occasion in front of you all, especially you wonderful deacons, I'm reminded of the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Donald Coggan, who said, if your knees aren't knocking when you're getting into a pulpit, then don't get into it. <laughs> and similarly, a few centuries earlier, the reformer John Knox said, I have never once feared the devil, but I tremble every time I enter the pulpit. And just because we often think in threes in the church, a third quotation. Apparently, Saint Ignatius said, a bishop is never more like God than when silent. But I'm not going to let that little quotation stop me from proceeding. For clergy, being at an ordination is likely to be an occasion to recall their own big day. And I certainly remember my own priesting after six long years as a deacon. The night finally arrived 30 years ago in just a few weeks' time. And we women lined the stairs of the cathedral to join the procession with Archbishop Keith Rayner, the assistant bishops, and all the male clergy. And spontaneous clapping started as we walked down those stairs. As we walked down to join the procession. And I was so overwhelmed with emotion, I couldn't meet anyone's gaze, not even that of my priest brother, Bishop Lindsay Irwin, some of you will know him, whose views on the ordination of women differ to my own, but who, living in the United Kingdom at the time, had made the journey to be there that night. It wasn't on the occasion of my priesting, but of my deaconing, that first, again, for women in the history of the Anglican Church of Australia in 1986. That each of the women was given a card from the Movement for the Ordination of Women, which had a picture of a woman pouring out water from a large water jar. And these words were written alongside the flow of the water. By faith, we obeyed the call to set out without knowing where we were going just like the story of Ruth in the Old Testament. After the death of her husband, Ruth refuses to leave her mother-in-law, Naomi's side. Where you go, I will go, she says, and your God will be my God. And so she sets out without knowing quite where the path would lead her. So it is for you, ordinance. Many times during your life as priests, with all the plans and the strategies in the world tucked under your arm, perhaps, still you will need in faith to set out without quite knowing where you are heading. But what will give you your sense of direction and purpose will be to look to Jesus. He is your compass. It is Christ who has called you and allows you to participate in his priesthood. 
a priesthood characterised by lo losing life in order to gain it. Well, I look at you all down there and I've spent the last few day, wonderful days with you and I see excitement and happiness and a little nervousness perhaps. And you should be. For the ordinal says, you will be called to account before Jesus Christ. It's another way of saying that what you are all prepared to do today is a very vulnerable thing and we've used that word a lot these last few days. But be assured of those words of the prophet Isaiah. You will neither faint nor grow weary. You shall renew your strength and mount up with wings like an eagle's. And you will do this in the power of the Holy Spirit. Such a beautiful image to take with you on your journey in life as a priest. Always remembering, as the author of the first letter of Peter reminds his diaspora, to tend the flock of God that is in your charge willingly, as God would have you do it. At a time, of course, it's normal to ask oneself, am I up for it, if only others knew the real me? Imposter syndrome can derail any of us. If not too extreme, though, this can keep us humble, aware of our own frailty and limitations and weaknesses, realising that we can do nothing apart from the one we serve. Perhaps like those disciples we read about in John's Gospel, we may be tempted to hide behind locked doors for fear of being exposed. Nothing, though, can keep Jesus out. He comes to them through closed doors and stands among them, bringing just what they need. Peace. Peace to quieten their hearts. Peace to calm their fears. Jesus knows the secrets of our hearts and still he calls us. He is calling you and as he showed his wounds to those terrified disciples in that room on that day, so he shows us his crucified and risen self. The risen Christ is that same Christ who was wounded, tortured and broken. Vulnerabilities and brokenness, redeemed and transformed into new life. I have seen the Lord, says Mary Magdalene, as light broke through her darkness on that early Easter morning. Those five words speak into our vocations, your vocation as priest. They promise hope, healing, new beginnings, understanding, pioneering, new wineskins, breaking of shackles, bringing treasures out of fields. The risen Jesus sends the disciples out of that upper room to be apostles, out of that seemingly protected if anxiety-ridden space, and with the very breath of his life, he casts them into the world, their purpose being to share with others the message of redemption and new life. Casting all their anxiety on him, they will, on the breath of God that promises to fill hearts and minds and lungs, tend the flock that is in their charge. This breath of life will enable you, ordinance, to be faithful to your call, to be prayers. The church needs a praying priesthood. This is your privilege and it's your duty as priests in the Church of God. Of course, you will also preside at the Eucharist, so always prepare always self-examine, always be thankful for the gift of bread and wine. As priests, invite all to the table because all are welcome. 
And by being there, says Bishop Rowan Williams, all present will be reminded that Jesus wants their company so that he might bless and transform them. And what of those words, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven, whose sins you retain, they are retained? I was chatting with a parishioner recently and the conversation started innocuously enough and suddenly tears rolling down her face as she shared with me something of her very damaged life. And then she said, I just can't believe that God would think I'm of worth. With who I am and what I've done, I've been told all my life I'm no good and I shouldn't expect to get anything. Well, what to say, what to do, how to help, when really I was just passing her in the aisle as I walked back up after the service. But that encounter was one of those, what someone has called, and we've spoken of this, one of those fantastic privileges that we clergy sign up for at our ordination. The privilege of being able to sit with another in the abyss of their suffering. And if we trust looking deeply enough into that abyss, we will see not nothing, but instead the face of Christ who heals, redeems, restores, forgives. That is the heart of your calling as priests. Well, the English Bishop Andrew Rumsey writes, for you to be a minister of Christ does not require you to be perfect. Wearing the strip can sometimes play that trick on you and others. The best, most inspiring clergy are those who know that their plastic collars quickly crack and that it is all too easy to trip on your robes, especially when climbing into the pulpit. <laughs> Today, as newly ordained priests, you will all go out of this cathedral as shepherds, under shepherds of the Good Shepherd, not because you must, but because you are willing. Preach Christ crucified and administer the sacraments, Bible in one hand, prayer book, and sacraments in the other. Well, I finish on a note of joy, the joy of priesthood, the joy that comes from knowing we have a gospel to proclaim. Live and preach the joy of those five words, I have seen the Lord trusting that even in darkness and failure and disappointment and struggle, joy comes with the morning, as the psalmist says. And remember, always turn to Christ as you promised to do at your baptism. So set out, off you go, even if you have no idea where you're going. And hold on to the desire to please the one who has called you and who equips you, trusting that if you do this, you will be led by the right road. Amen. And now, as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
Philip, Bishop of the Church of God, we present to you these deacons to be ordained priests. Can you assure us that they are suited by their learning and godly living to minister as priests in the household of Christ? They have been examined. Inquiries have been made among the people of God, especially among those concerned with their preparation. And we believe that these candidates are fit for this office. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this office. We have been assured that these deacons are suited to this ministry. If, however, any of you know an adequate reason why we should not proceed, come forward and make it known. Let us pray for these persons now to be ordained priests. Eternal God and Father, you have promised to hear those who pray in the name of your Son. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may obtain according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ summons us all to obedience and discipleship. In baptism, we are called to be a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God, to make Christ known in all the world. Now you are responding to the call of God and of the church, to live and work as a priest, a pastor and teacher, for God's glory and the strengthening of God's people. 
You know the responsibility and significance of this office. I now exhort you in the name of Christ to take up your calling with joy and dedication. As the Lord's messenger, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Seek the lost. Announce God's justice. Warn and correct those in error. You are to encourage and build up the body of Christ, preaching the word of God, leading God's people in prayer, declaring God's forgiveness and blessing, and faithfully ministering the sacraments of God's grace with reverence and care. Together with your bishop and other ministers, you are to take your part in the life and counsels of the church. Be a pastor after the pattern of Christ the Great Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep. Be a teacher taught by the Lord in wisdom and holiness. Lead the people of God as a servant of Christ. Love and serve the people with whom you work, caring alike for young and old, rich and poor, weak and strong. Never forget how great a treasure is placed in your care. The church you must serve is Christ's spouse and body, purchased at the cost of his own life. Remember that you will be called to give account before Jesus Christ if it should come about that the church or any of its members is hurt or hindered as a result of your negligence. You know the greatness of the fault and the judgment that will follow. Therefore, apply yourself with diligence and care and fashion your life and ministry in accordance with Christ's example. As you depend on the Holy Spirit and the grace of God, put away all that does not make for holiness of life. Clothe yourself with humility. Be constant in prayer. Study the scriptures wholeheartedly, reflecting with God's people upon their meaning, so that your ministry and life may be shaped by Christ. We have every confidence that you have already pondered these things deeply. And now, in order that this congregation may understand your intention, and so that your public profession may strengthen your resolve, answer clearly these questions which we ask you in the name of God and of the Church. Do you believe that you are truly called to this order and ministry of priests according to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ and the order of this Anglican Church of Australia? I, Kathleen Alon Ross, believe I'm on call to this ministry. I, Hodan Ameri, believe I am called to this ministry. I. I, Elsa Carr, believe I am called to this ministry. I, David Chiswell, believe I am called to this ministry. I, Benjamin Clements, believe I am called to this ministry. I, Kristen Dillon, believe I am called to this ministry. I, Louis Glazebrook, believe I am called to this ministry. I, Gavin Hansford, believe I am called to this ministry. I, Bradley Jackson, believe I am called to this ministry. I, Isha Koro, believe I am called to this ministry. I'm Andrea Knight, believe I'm called to this ministry. I, Terence Ng, believe I am calling to this ministry. I, Joshua Simon, believe I'm called to this ministry. I, Anastasia Slater, believe I'm called to this ministry. I, Sabri Dilon Sui, believe I'm called to this ministry. I, Lydia Tangadu Rainada, believe I'm called to this ministry. I, Grace Wang, believe I'm called to this ministry. I, Samantha White, believe I am called to this ministry. Are you convinced that the Holy Scriptures contain all doctrine necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And are you determined to instruct from these scriptures the people committed to your care, teaching nothing as essential to salvation which cannot be demonstrated from the scriptures? Will you be diligent in prayer and in the study of the Holy Scriptures? Will you undertake such other studies as will help you in your ministry? 
we constantly stir up the gift of God which is in you, so that you may proclaim the gospel of Christ. Will you faithfully and humbly minister the doctrine, sacraments, and discipline of Christ as he commanded and as this church has received them? Will you be ready both in your public and private ministry to oppose and set aside teaching that is contrary to God's word? Will you be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve and lead? striving together with them to build up the body of Christ in truth and love, in unity and peace. Will you encourage and enable those committed to your care to fulfill their ministry and mission in the world? Will you obey your bishop and other ministers given authority over you, gladly and willingly following their godly and lawful directions? May God, who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. Amen. You have heard these persons respond to God's call to love and serve him as priests. Will you accept them as priests in the church of God? We accept them gladly. Will you support and encourage them in this ministry? We will by God's grace. Let us now pray earnestly for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Kathleen Alun Ross. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You have given us your only Son to be the Apostle and High Priest of our faith and the Shepherd of our souls. Exalted as Lord of all, he poured out the Spirit and gave gifts to your people, making some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry and to build up the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks you have called these your servants to the ministry of priests in your church.
Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Kathleen, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Hoda and Mary. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Hoda, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Elsa Carr. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Elsa, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. 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 Elsa, take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. David Chiswell. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant David, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Benjamin Clements. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Benjamin, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. 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 
Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Kristen Dillon. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant, Kristen, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands, the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. <coughs> Louis Glazebrook. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Louis, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. <coughs> Gavin Hansford. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Gavin, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you're appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Amen. Bradley Jackson. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Bradley, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Ishak Koro. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Ishak, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. 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 
Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Andrea Nag. <clears throat> Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Andrea, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Terence mm. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Terence, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Joshua Simon. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Joshua, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Anastasia Slater. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Anastasia, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands, the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of God's holy word and of his holy sacraments. Amen. Amen. Severi Sui.
send down the Holy Spirit upon your servants every, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the Word of God and to minister the Holy Sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. The sins you forgive, they are forgiven. The sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the Word of God and of His Holy Sacraments. Amen. <coughs> Lydia Tenga. Kang Tanga Durinada. <coughs> Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Lydia, whom we set apart by the laying out of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. Whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Amen. Grace Wang. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Grace, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. Amen. Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. The sins you forgive, they are forgiven. The sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. Amen. Samantha White. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Samantha, whom we set apart by the laying on of our hands for the office and work of a priest in your church. Amen. 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 <coughs> Take authority to preach the word of God and to minister the holy sacraments in the congregation where you are appointed. The sins you forgive, they are forgiven. The sins you retain, they are retained. Be a faithful minister of the word of God and of his holy sacraments. <clears throat> Grant to these your servants, merciful God, grace and power to fulfill their ministry to proclaim the gospel of salvation through word and sacrament, to declare the forgiveness of sins, and to watch over and care for the people committed to their charge. As you have called them to your service, make them worthy of their calling. Accept our prayer through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honour, worship and praise, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, I present to you these newly ordained priests in the Church of God. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. He taught your word with boldness and offered himself to you in perfect obedience. He cared for all as a good shepherd and laid down his life for the sheep. By his death and rising to new life, he brought new life to your people, in baptism you have united us to him and brought us out of darkness into light. And now we give you thanks that in fulfillment of your promise you pour out your spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts and leading us into all truth. You give us power to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. You ordain ministers to proclaim your word, to care for your people, and to celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Savior taught us, so we pray, each in our own language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Heavenly Father, your Son, our King, gave gifts of leadership and service to the Church. Strengthen us who have received this holy food to be good stewards of your manifold grace. Through him who came not to be served, but to serve, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Amen. God, stir up within you the gift of the Spirit, that you may confess Jesus Christ as Lord and proclaim the joy of the everlasting gospel. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.